I'm kind of curious if the ultimate webcam is not a webcam at all. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I bought this. It's a USB camera module now. It kind of advertises itself as just a generic camera, and I don't think it has any microphones or anything like that. But what I hope it's like is a little pocket DSLR or something like this. It comes with mounting hardware here, so I suppose you could mount it to the wall or your desk or something like that. But I wanted to show this to you because it actually has some pretty unique features, and it kind of looks like a serious piece of kit as you can see there we've got the sensor in this block this all seems to be aluminum here looks like we have a quarter inch screw hole if you want to put this on a camera mount and it looks like we have a hole there and a hole there too so we've got the cable coming out the back here and this looks very long it looks like we probably have 10 15 feet of cable now it looks like we have some sort of connector there i was thinking about pulling it apart but i kind of tugged on it just a little bit and it doesn't want to seem to come apart so I don't want to break it. Now, I also want to show you that if I unravel this little bad boy, we get a traditional USB plug on that end. The other thing about this is that you can see we have a couple of levers here. And what you can do here is you can unscrew them a little bit. They also have a little slot, so you could use a flathead screwdriver or something thin. And then I can unscrew them and then move them around. So toward and wide right there, I think, on the bottom. And then this ring moves right here. And then I think, again, loosen this one up at the top just a little bit and then i think this one would be the focus we also have a little cover right there so that you can be sure that it's not filming or broadcasting but what's interesting about this is i think one we could really dial it in i wonder if i can get that bokeh effect and i also wonder if the quality of this is actually going to be better than my pretty decent webcam so let's go ahead and connect this and try it out all right, Panda Nation, so I am sitting in front of my computer here. I'm actually using my HyperX Quadcast microphone for the audio, so I'm going to keep that consistent between the different shots here. Now, I'm actually using a Nexigo webcam that I really like. It's a 1080p, 60fps webcam. Pretty standard webcam for computers, but it's a pretty nice one. So, this has served me pretty well over time. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you is that I just have my standard overhead lights on. I don't have any lights in front of me, and so I'm kind of looking a little red here and a little dark. What I actually want to do now is actually go ahead and turn on my live stream studio lights which should kind of bounce those from the back to the front and this should look a lot better so i should be lit up more it should be a little bit more accurate to like colors and things like that and you should be getting a pretty good picture of what this webcam is capable of now one thing i will say is that even though i'm in focus here what you can see is all the stuff behind me is also in focus because the webcams have a really long focal length i think i'm really not a photo file so i think that's what happens when you have like everything kind of in focus so i can't really get a bokeh effect not naturally with this particular web camera so what i want to do now is swap it out with this new megapixel webcam and see if that looks any different all right so i've got the camera plugged in here and i've actually been playing around with it a little bit one of the things that i will say is that uh, despite the fact that it's not really a web camera that is a disadvantage in the fact that it doesn't have one of these bases where i can adjust or like a gimbal neck here where i can adjust the camera angle towards me right now it's pointing right at my face and i'd probably adjust it down what you can also see is we're getting a little bit of a fisheye lens here this is a pretty wide angle lens on this little bad boy which i think you can maybe order in different configurations but you want to be aware of that because it's taking in a lot of the picture and kind of distorting it now there are some things that you can do here as i was playing around with it so like i said that wide or towards i can actually adjust that i'm going to go ahead and get in on that and you can see what ends up happening is now i actually see the smudges on the glass so i have to go back up to the one the focus ring here and focus in for that now what's also kind of interesting is i can kind of uh keep it fuzzy if i want to but right there now it seems like it's pretty well focused in. So what I can do is I can go in, but then I have to refocus. And this is something that you wanna use for shots that are going to remain the same distance from the camera. I mean, I assume you could use this for things a little further away, but what you have to do then is if I'm gonna go away like that, then you're gonna have to uh, refocus here and that's how it is. But I'll tell you what, I mean, the colors actually look pretty good. Now, the funny thing about this, the middle ring, I didn't realize, I think it's some sort of aperture because if I can go all the way down there and obviously there's barely any light coming in, this looks like I'm shooting in the middle of the night. I can kind of raise it up. So if I want to just dial that in, you know, kind of like have it a little bit more romantic, like Delilah, I can do that, but 
kind of middle of the day right now, so oops, wrong way. So I can kind of turn that all the way up. It's kind of like turning the gain up. So, you know, I think this is really interesting. Um, I like the fact that I can control the zoom and the focus and really put this wherever I want. You're seeing me play with this real time here. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting, man. Now, I will say I haven't been able to at least get this to do any of that bokeh effect like DSLRs. But it is kind of interesting because I get so much finer control over everything on this that I just don't get with kind of your standard webcam. So it really depends. I mean, if the webcam is fine, if you're just doing Zoom meetings, team meetings, you know, those types of things, then it's probably not that big of a deal. But I can see you using this as a webcam that isn't going to adjust or be jittery, things like that. But I also can see you using this as like external cameras so if you're shooting a podcast and you want a wide shot of the two of you on a podcast or maybe just in front of you, you can get a few of these. I mean, it's only like 55, 56 bucks for this thing. So in terms of cameras, it's got a lot of fine control and yet it's priced like an entry level webcam. So that's pretty awesome. Now, keep in mind, no microphone or anything on there. So you're going to need your own microphone. So uh, that's something that's missing from your standard webcam, but I almost never use the webcam microphones anyway. They just don't seem to be that good. So, I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued by this thing. I kind of wonder if some have different lenses or something like that. I would kind of like to get rid of the fisheye, and I would love to have the background blurred naturally a little bit more. I just think that helps people draw into me a little bit more, kind of hone in on me, because otherwise they wouldn't. They'd look at everything else. It's kind of sad, but true. So, pretty nice camera for the money. Does a lot. I think it's intriguing. I might try some more of these. Hey, if you want to pick up this particular camera and try it out on your setup, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Peter Von Panda. Out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper. We can live